let's talk about your $100 million investment in breakthrough initiatives. You're going to hunt for intelligent extraterrestrial life. Why go for this very literal moonshot now? Why is the timing right? Well, other than uh, that it was my childhood dream, um, actually many factors uh, have converged to uh, launching this project now. One is that um, we now have a scientific evidence that emerged in the last uh, uh, few years due to NASA uh, telescopes that are, have been launched, especially the Kepler telescope. Uh, so that it became clear now with scientific rigor that there are probably 20 to 40 billion Earth-like planets uh, just in our galaxy. And when I'm saying Earth-like planets, it means pretty much, you know, what you will see when you look outside. There will be liquid water. Uh, there will be uh, um, all the conditions that uh, uh, life can, uh, can use to emerge and pr proliferate. And... Uh, a few years ago, we had no clue. Maybe there would be a few planets like Earth, maybe there will be many. But now we know that just in our galaxy, the number is uh, more than 20 billion. Pretty much every second star, which is uh, the size of the sun, has a planet similar to Earth in a habitable zone. So now we have two options. One is to ignore the scientific data and just say, uh, let's continue business as usual. And the second is, Let's try to do something about it, assuming that given so many possibilities, somewhere life has emerged. There is also additional evidence that life on Earth emerged very early after the Earth cooled down. And uh, we had three and a half billion to, to go between uh, bacteria and us and other you know, possibilities uh, existing around the world had, you know, many more billions of years because we know the universe is 14 billion years old. So, so this is one. The second is that um, we now have the equipment and uh, we have the software to analyze data at a rate uh, uh, that is much greater than any previous effort. So this effort will be able to analyze the data uh, in a day as much as uh, any previous effort in a year, just because of the software and hardware. And also something which is uh, routinely uh, not appreciated is that to communicate between uh, civilizations is actually, is actually very cheap. So I've, uh, I've just prepared a couple of slides to demonstrate that. So uh, if you just call the first slide. Can we bring up the next slide, por favor? No, no, actually the previous slide. Previous slide. Yeah, so this, uh, this is the largest telescope on Earth, which is called Arecibo. It's uh, in Puerto Rico. It is 1,000 feet wide. And it, you know, we've been using it for, for many years. So the, the next slide, please. So if you imagine that another civilization is no more de developed than us, and they have exactly the same telescope, somewhere in the middle of the Milky Way, then they will be able to communicate with us just using the same equipment. The next slide. So it is extremely cheap to send the signal across 150 million billion miles just using the equipment that we have and uh, the transmitters that uh, are routinely used. The next slide, please. So now this is, a, uh, this is a more challenging task. How do, do you communicate between galaxies? So this is the nearby galaxy, which is called Andromeda. Let's assume that uh, the civilization exactly like ours is sitting there. This is much further out. It takes 2.5 million years to send the signal one way. But what would it take to send the signal? The next slide. So this is the, uh, uh, the biggest... Um, energy generating facility that we have on Earth. It's located in China. And uh, if you go to the next slide, it takes only two of those to connect to the same kind of uh, transmitter to communicate between the galaxies across enormous distances of 15 million trillion miles. So it is an extremely cheap endeavor to communicate between even the galaxies. So we're making the bet that 
you know, somebody should be sending something out there, and this is our responsibility to keep looking. So part of breakthrough is not just uh, looking, but deciding how we communicate when it's time. I know that you've kind of open sourced that and asked people to submit their own ideas, but I'm curious what you would do if you were in charge. What would you say to the intelligent life that we find? It's, uh, it's actually a non-trivial complicated question because not only you need to come up with the content, but also you need to come up with the coding. That's why I would think that maybe a few people in this room will even participate. We announced a $1 million prize for the best message that if we hear from them, you know, we would be able to send over. So this uh, competition is ongoing and we will announce the rules very shortly.